Good day Grade 10s. Welcome to your next lesson in Functions. Today we're going to introduce you to a graph that we've kind of been using as an example. It's this straight line graph. Now you've probably come across it in Grade 9 and this is just revision which is awesome. But if it's not, don't stress, we'll teach it to you, teach it to you nice and slowly and make sure you understand it. So the equation for a straight line, the general equation for the straight line is y equals mx plus c where your x is still your independent variable, independent variable, and your y is still your dependent variable. Okay, but what you need to know, depend, dependent variable, sorry about that, what you need to know about are M and C. Now what is special about C? C is your Y intercept. It's where it cuts the Y axis and your M is your slope or your gradient. It means the same thing, slope or gradient. So if we look at some of the examples on the right hand side here, you can see that at the moment for this, if you read across, the way to use this is to read across and then read down. So or down and then across makes a difference. But in this case, we're going to read across. In this case, C is greater than naught, which means that your Y cut, the place where this line cuts the, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the different color and then highlight the line so you know what I'm talking about. If you see this straight line graph, okay, you can see that this is the y cut. It cuts the y axis above the x axis. And that's what that c is greater than naught means. It means that the y intercept is bigger than naught. If your graph goes straight across, again, makes no difference what the gradient is. If your c is positive, then it cuts the y axis above the zero. And you can see that here we've got a different slope, but still, your gradient, I mean your y-intercept is above the zero. Now let's look at the c equals naught. If c equals naught, then it just means that it cuts at the intercept of the x and y axes, where x is naught, y is naught. And again, x is naught, y is naught. If both m equals naught and y equals, and c equals naught, you actually don't have a graph. Think about it, y is equal to naught times by x plus naught doesn't make sense. So therefore you don't have a graph. If C is smaller than naught, then what is happening? Your C is cutting the y-axis below the x-axis. Again, C is smaller than naught. And here you've got C is smaller than naught. Okay, so if the C is bigger than naught, we cut above the x-axis. In other words, we have a positive y-intercept, which makes sense because c is positive. If c equals naught, then it means that it goes through naught in the graph. It cuts the zero, zero point on the graph. Okay, easy peasy. And if c is smaller than naught, then it has a negative y-intercept. In other words, what we're saying is it cuts below the x-axis. Now let's look at what the gradient means. So I'm going to change color. In color, let's get green. Okay, so now let's look at this. If m is smaller than naught, then what do you notice? You notice the gradient always is the way I describe this is it's going up to the left. So if your gradient is smaller than naught, it's going up towards the left. If your gradient is bigger than naught, then what's happening? It's actually going up to the right. It's going up to the right. So if it's bigger than naught, then it's going up to the right. And if it's equal to zero, and we'll go through some examples of this later, then that means that what happens? Let's say, for example, you y is equal to zero x plus two. 
that means that y is always equal to 2. So it doesn't matter what the x value is, the y value is always going to be equal to 2. So if m equals 0, we've just got some nice horizontal lines. So let's go through this again. If m is smaller than 0, it moves up to the left. If it's equal to 0, it's horizontal. And if it's bigger than 0, it goes up to the right. Okay, so it's good to learn those things, but now we're going to put it in practice and then you can see what happens. So now there are two ways that we can actually work out how to draw a graph, and the first way is called the dual intercept method. So dual intercept method, okay, means that we are going to look at, we're going to work out where this graph cuts the x-axis and where this graph cuts the y-axis, and then we're going to join the dots. Dual means basically two or both, an intercept is basically where it cuts, whoopsie, cuts the axes. Okay, that's what the intercept means. Okay, so now, we don't need to get this in standard form to use a dual intercept method. To find the y-intercept, we're going to let x equal naught. So we're going to go 3 times naught plus 2y equals 6. Why are we going to do that? Because if we want to find the y-intercept, you know, it's where it cuts the y-axis, do you agree that x is naught all the way along that line? This point here is naught minus 1, naught minus 2, naught minus 3, up is naught 1, naught 2, naught 3, so x is always naught. So we're going to let x equal to naught, so therefore we have that 2y is equal to 6, and therefore y is equal to 3, which means that this graph is cutting the y-axis at 3. Now it says by finding the x-intercept by letting, by letting your y equal naught. Okay, so we're going to do that. I just need to find my pen. Oh, there it is. By letting the y equal naught. So why do we do that? Because we want to find it with cuts this graph here. And do you agree that, yeah, the y is 0. This point here would be minus 3, 0, minus 2, 0, minus 1, 0, etc, etc. So if we do this, we've got 3x is, it, sorry, plus 2 times 0 is equal to 6. So therefore 3x is equal to 6. Therefore x is equal to 2. So therefore, if I plot this on this graph over here, and then I just join the dots. Whee! Sorry, I always do sound effects when I'm trying to draw a straight line. I don't know why. So there is our graph, okay? And it's going through 3 and 2. Right. Now the next typical type of questions, it says, now please note we did not need to put the equation into standard form, it is very important that you don't. Okay, let's look at the gradient intercept method of exactly the same question. Now in this question we need to put it into the standard form. So in order to put it in the standard form we need to make y the subject of the formula. So first of all let's get everything that is not a y onto the other side. So we've got 2y is equal to minus 3x plus 6. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. So you've got y is equal to minus 3 over 2x plus 6 over 2. So therefore we've got minus 3 over 2x plus 3. Now from that we know that 3 is the y cut because that's our c. Okay. Then we know that this bit here, this minus 3 over 2, this m is minus 3 over 2. That is our gradient. Now negative gradients mean that they go up to the left. Remember we learned that, up to the left. And now we're saying, okay fine, we know that this is actually your rise over your run. Your gradient is your rise over your run. Or how much should we go down by how much should we go across? So if we look at this, we went down 1, 2, 3, and across by 2, 1, 2. So therefore, that is our gradient there, and we can go wee again, and we get exactly the same graph. Okay. Now, just to make sure that you do know how to work out the domains and ranges of straight line graphs, we've actually done this before in the previous um, video, but let's just go through it again. Remember that the domain is what? Your domain is your x values. It's how far this graph stretches across the x 
axes. And remember that this arrow here tells you it's going to carry on and on forever that way and on and on forever this way. So therefore our domain, domain is going to be that x is smaller than positive infinity or bigger than negative infinity for x is an element of real values. And if we do the range, again, remember that the range, J range, is your Y values. And again, these arrow tells you it's going to go up forever and it's going to go down forever. So therefore, the domain is going to be minus infinity. It's going to stretch from all the way through from minus infinity to Y to positive infinity for Y is an element of real values. Right. Now let's look at vertical lines. Vertical lines, let's look at, for example, x equals 2. So if you look at this equation, I just need to change my color because green on green is not going to work very well. It's too purple. So when x, when y is 1 minus 1, what is x? x is 2. When y is 0, what is x? x is 2. When y is 1, what is x? x is 2. So if we plot this, we can see that x equals 2, 2, and 2. So therefore you will see that this is a vertical line. I'm sorry that is really supposed to be a straight line graph but I'm struggling with this notepad. So use a ruler please so that there is a vertical line. So you'll notice that there is not the normal standard y equals mx plus c. It is just telling you that whatever, it doesn't matter what happens, x is equal to 2. Now let's look at a horizontal line. When x equals minus 1, does it make an impact? No, y equals 2. When x is 0, y equals 2. And when y x equals 1, y is 2. So therefore, if we go across, we you can see that it doesn't matter what our x value is, our y value is going to be straight across. So now you've worked out, we've done y equals mx plus c, you know the m is the gradient, you know the c is the intercept, we've looked at two different methods, the dual intercept or the basically changing it into equation and solving for y equals mx plus c, which is called the gradient intercept method. And you've learnt about horizontal lines, and about vertical lines. So grade 10, that's it for straight lines. Now what you need to go do is you need to go practice, practice, practice using both the methods on how to draw these graphs and then go do the assessment at the end of the section to make sure you can do everything. Thank you, have a great day.